the night. Welcome back to our following live session of Mindful Elevation. Thank you for taking your time to spend it with us. Tonight we're going to talk about confidence and we have Ms. Melanie Edgar here with us. And um, so tonight is going to be an interactive night again where we're going to talk about this topic. If you have any questions, you can always post it in the chat. But for now, everybody is going to be muted. And then um, in between, we will always read your questions to see if you have anything. And then we will post it and then um, we will talk about your questions. So, Ms. Melanie Edgar, welcome, mm -hmm. welcome. How are oh, you hi. <laughs> Great. Good. Tired, but good. <laughs> nice, nice, nice. So mm -hmm. tell us a little bit about yourself so we can get to know who is uh, Miss Melanie Edgar. All right. Well, I've spent most of my adult life um, teaching. So, but teaching in not in the, um, they call it the non-compulsory sector. So, <laughs> um, I started off as a Sunday school teacher when I was about 15. And then I, um, I've always done like workshops and yeah, so now I, t I, in the, as my day job, I lecture, um, 16 to 25 year olds, teaching them digital marketing and computing, but I have a passion for personal development and coaching. And I've had that since I've started, um, being a lecturer for young people. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, I'm really interested in, um, yeah, I, I believe that I have a gift of encouragement and, uh, you know, part of that is about, about coaching and um, helping people to see what they've got inside of them, what they can use and, and you know, move forward. Okay, nice. And mm -hmm. what made you decide to start lecturing and, and teaching actually? Well, I realized, like I told you, that um, well, my dad was a Sunday school teacher. Mm -hmm. And um, what he used to do, he used to, um, we used to have, we used to travel quite far to this school because it was like a, a Sunday school. It was a plant. I couldn't read or had problems reading. And what he used to do, he used to sit us all in a circle and then one by one, he would give them everyone a Bible and, um, and help them to sound out words. And he used to like set the ground rules. So he'd say, look, nobody left and try and, try and um, make it a supportive atmosphere so that everybody can learn to read. Mm -hmm. And um, it was very successful. And um, yeah, that kind of gave me that I think that's the kind of spark that gave me thinking that I would teach but at the time when I came to do my um, options at school I didn't think I would want to do teaching because I used to affect me emotionally I used to think oh I can't be when you say some somebody learn it's quite magical especially small children you can't really understand how they retain the information. When you ask them certain questions, you find it's amazing. Oh, so but can't I say good evening? <laughs> it's increasing me. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's all, sometimes it used to make me feel tearful. I can't be where every minute I'm tearful. <laughs> so I decided to study law. I enjoyed studying law and I thought I would have a career in, um, as a solicitor, but it so happened that um, I, 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 I enjoyed doing it, but I found it difficult to find work. And um, after about three years of being an administrator, I decided my husband, he, used, he was a lecturer. He lectured in IT. He said, why don't you go and lecture? So I did, did a course and there was a choice between doing business and IT. So I did IT. So I, I ended up doing that for 10 years. And mm -hmm. in, in, in the last final year, it was saying that, you know what, you shouldn't actually be teaching IT. You, I did a Myers-Briggs test and it was saying that I should be doing like, I should be a therapist. Anyway, okay. so I, 
I took a, I took a career break and in, during that time I did a few business bits, mm-hmm. you know, tried to set up on my own. Um, and um, I learned a lot in the, in, I think I took about four years did a little bit of business, mostly looking after my children. I've got three boys. Um, and I ended up doing the course. Well, during that, I found out that my eldest son had dyslexia. So I found a course where um, it taught me about, um, it was called Anything is Possible. And um, it covered the area this vision and what was it's it's so powerful because anytime I meet young people or meet anyone mm-hmm. for the first time I use these five questions it's what makes you laugh or smile is, is a source of joy for you mm-hmm. um what wakes you up in the morning what's the reason that you wake up in the morning what interests and excites you what are your hobbies and interests and if money was no object what would you be doing Right. And when you ask those questions all together, it, it enables um, people to talk about themselves, which they love to talk about themselves. But it also asks those deep questions as, um, to find out what your passion is, to start thinking about what it is that you want to do, what you want out of life. Mm-hmm. And um, with young people, one, one of the issues you have is... Um, it's, well, I don't know if it's the same in the Caribbean, but here, you, by the time they get a teenager, nobody's really asking them what they want, what is it they like, or, mm-hmm. or, or I don't know if they've got a real grasp of who they are and what it is, what, what they really enjoy doing. It's very much, oh, your mum is taking you here and you're going to do this, you're going to do football, you're going to do this. And you'll find that some children... They're, they're, they're spending time doing a lot of things that they're not, they haven't chosen to do. Right. And then they haven't really spent time thinking about what it is they like to do. So it's like, the, so that course was so powerful because it was, all, it was very much like a personal development course. Mm-hmm. It can be taught f- for anyone, but um, this one was ba- aimed at young people and aimed at young people from age. The very youngest can be eight, but the brilliant time, a brilliant um, age group is from 10 upwards. And I've used it from 10 to people who's age 18. Okay. Yeah, it's been nice. really good. Nice. Mm-hmm. So, um, like you said, you have been lecturing and teaching quite some time already. And um, tonight the topic is confident, being confident mm. in yourself and how you can achieve it. What, what is the reason that you think that it's so important for youth, but also actually adults to be confident and, and try to incorporate it in everything that you just do? Um, I think it's really important to have a sense of knowing what you're capable of. Um, it's like it's good to have a like an audit of mm-hmm. um, what you can do and what kind of skills you've got that you can build on going forward. Yeah, mm-hmm. because if you, um, I think, I think I've grown up. I think I've been taught to be a citizen of the world. You know, my parents are Jamaican, mm-hmm. and they, you know. The, they value education and they just make sure that they made sure of me as growing up that I, I know my voice I can voice my opinion we can I can there's, there's nobody I can't I can't talk to I talk to everybody and yeah. I think that's a very good um okay you have to have boundaries but I think it's really good to be able in this world that we live in to be able to move and shake. I call it move and shake with anyone, mm-hmm. you know, and be able to converse and also to be able to um, articulate what it is you want. Um, and also to speak on behalf of, the, of others sometimes, because, you know, a lot of the time, what used to frustrate me when I was a young person is that people like to hide and I like to, like say if we need something we need to say we need to get on with it correct so because of how i've I've been brought up 
So oftentimes, sometimes I talk. Some, but, um, my pastor said one time that I shoot from the hip. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I talk from the heart. I think, I think a lot of Caribbean people do that. They talk from yes. the heart. Go and I haven't got time to, to waste, but just to make sure that you do it in a loving way. Yeah, that is true. Mm-hmm. Um, well, tonight we're talking about the topic confident, and I was mm-hmm. just I just want to um, indicate that if you have a question or you want to say something, you can always type it. But for now, everybody is mute. Okay, so um, you teach particular subject. So how do mm-hmm. you incorporate it in your subjects? Well, <laughs> it's quite funny because. This year, I'm teaching, so since September, I've been teaching computing. Now, I haven't really taught, com- I hadn't taught computing for about, say, 10 years. Mm-hmm. I've done a bit of IT. I did a little bit, but not computing. So computing is really about the architecture of the computer and not the computer from the inside. Mm-hmm. When I was teaching it before, I was doing it as a u- more of a user. It was information technology, which is quite different. Mm-hmm. It's like learning applications. I did a little bit of, uh, you know, how to use computer in a business. So this has been a le- steep learning curve for me. So when I got into the job, I was really, I was a bit worried because the kid, oh, you know, I'm teaching, there's two things I teach. So I teach digital marketing, which I knew something about that already. Mm-hmm. But also I was teaching infrastructure technicians. So infrastructure technicians is cloud computing. And what was the other thing I was teaching them? It was cloud computing and something else. Something very technical that I, I wasn't, I didn't know. <laughs> so I just had to turn up with the skills that I had. Mm-hmm. And um, I just found myself um, just talking to them, finding out what they know, what they bring to the table. Because what mm-hmm. I learned about teaching is that it's not all about me disseminating knowledge to students. It's actually all of us have got knowledge mm-hmm. and it's about harnessing what you already know and then helping them to propel to you know higher levels of knowledge yeah mm-hmm. so um yes i was struggling along with them i did uh, one of my colleagues he he was more um he had the powerpoints ready and then i would give them but i would always ask them what is so i do apologize so um so I was, so I, I went there with the skills that I have. You know, I, have, I told you already, I do personal development. I'm a friendly person. I'm a chatty person. In my t- teaching, I think with one of my biggest, one, there's two big skills I have. Number one is pastoral. I'm quite good at, you know, helping people with, you know, stress and anxiety. And help people feel comfortable in the classroom. Because once you can get a child to feel comfortable or a young person to feel comfortable in your classroom that's half of your job done and then secondly that um you know try you know working on what they know and what they've um done Mm -hmm. so i found that a lot of the some of the students they some of them had already worked at the level already so all i had to do was structure them and just make sure that they're the structured set of notes so that when they come to their exam that they pass now the year before they had me none of them passed Mm -hmm. they didn't have a they'd had a very low pass rate now and they were taught by somebody who was a doctor in education but they just Mm -hmm. didn't get on with them Mm -hmm. so when when they did their exam they all passed and all passed with high I had about a 95% pass rate. Nice. All passed. And okay, okay, it was a, there were uh, multiple choice questions. Mm-hmm. But the fact is that they weren't passing before and under me, they were passing. So, so I said to them, what is it then that you think that I'm bringing that you weren't getting before? And they said, number one, you treat us like, you don't treat us like school children. You teach us, you treat us more like adults. Mm-hmm. And then, then two, you provide structure. And I think that was quite powerful because I think if you feel that, you know, you put in a situation where you didn't know anything, you, well, you have to learn things quickly. Correct. And I'm not good at stress. I would rather not do it than <laughs> try and do it stress. Mm-hmm. So I just bring in what I have. And, um, 
and you know really develop good relationships with the with the guys um you know and felt like they i mean it with them all right. and and yeah they've all they're, they're all doing very well they're all passing i've had some new students come in new students started when i started mm -hmm. and at first i think they think they were a bit upset with the course because they wanted somebody who um they wanted somebody who knew everything and what mm -hmm. was quite funny what what's been quite funny is that at one point we had a teacher come in and he was doing a um he was doing a micro teach because they were advertising for for a post mm -hmm. so one of the boys said to me um I bet he's going to teach arrays. And he came in and he taught arrays. Mm -hmm. And one of the students who's really critical of me most of the time, he was so happy that this teacher had, had got all his PowerPoints, all his pictures done, everything. But he, he actually explained arrays horribly. Okay. I was confused. Mm -hmm. And, but the, the student, well, the student who's quite critical, he was just so happy because I think students who like to play a role they like you to be, not everybody, but some of them, they don't feel comfortable if you're not the be all and end all and you know everything. Because as far as they're concerned, all they need to do is sit there and be passive. But learning isn't that. Learning is very active. And then I think the way I, I was, um, the way I learned as well is that you know, we didn't have, I didn't have my mum knowing what to do. You know, she'd leave mm -hmm. me with the encyclopedia and I'd work it out for myself. And I think some, some of that is the best learning because you learn how you, you have a more of an eye understanding of how you work and what skills you've got. And I think that's what gives you confidence in the end. Right. If I'm sitting down coasting on a teacher all the time, thinking I'm going to wait on them, you're not really learning anything. Correct. There has to be, I think there has to be, as well you know, there has to be an, a, 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 a point of uncomfortability. When you come out of that comfort zone and you're a bit scared, and I have to do, I go through this myself, it's a bit scared, but you pass that fear and you feel a sense of achievement. Exactly. That builds your confidence. Yes. Correct. Being able to, um, what I found is with confidence as well, it it's really good to have self-knowledge know what you're capable of doing know what your basic skills are you know we all have transferable skills mm -hmm. to be able to identify what those are identify what those skills are and then you know you've got a base point in what we wish to work with because mm -hmm. often we tell ourselves when we're in a new environment or a new setting that everything is different but it isn't there are some base things that you, you're entering a new situation with. Okay. And I'm talking to myself as I'm talking to you now because I had to teach something new to a, a new set of students. It was mm -hmm. a similar, this today, so it was a similar subject, but the approach had to be very different. Mm -hmm. And I was so, oh, I don't know if I've done enough. You know, we always doubt ourselves. I don't know if I've done enough. I've done what I've got to do, but I don't know what I've um, I don't know if I've done enough. And I think what's helpful is to have, identify, not only identify what you're coming to the table with, but if you've got somebody that you can, you can be accountable to and somebody who, um, like a coach, or it mm -hmm. could be a friend, or it could be a fellow professional that you can, you know, talk, you can bounce off. That really helps you to, you know, propel yourself forward, I think. Correct, correct. Because especially when we're teaching, we're thinking that um, we have to bring over all the information or interactive with whoever we're teaching. While if we leave them have some interaction that builds their confidence as well, instead of you standing in front, they coming and, and explain something as well. Because later down the line, when they have to go in the world, they will have to feel confident to do whatever they have to do. Mm -hmm. So, um, is, can you make a distinction, especially when you're teaching, between arrogancy and be feeling confident? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, arrogance can be a false sense of confidence. Mm -hmm. 
And um, I have actually, for myself, I've had to make a distinction between what is boldness and confidence. Because there's a time where I would always put myself first to do things. I think sometimes just to, I think it was a nerve, a coping strategy, strategy for nerves. Mm -hmm. um, but when I, when I had to put myself, I, I remember I had to do something and I was last and all the nerves and everything kicked in. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I had to, I had to, um, I had to calm down. And I think sometimes arrogant, arrogance can be like a, a front for all of the, all of your fears and your insecurities. You see, it's actually, it's actually, I would say it's the opposite of confidence. Confidence is like something that you carry deep within that you know is there. Mm -hmm. That even if you feel scared, there's something that's telling you, um, you've done this, it's going to be okay. Or, okay, it's going to be a new situation, but you're going to get over it. You're going to, you're going to face that fear, get over it and, and, and move on yeah mm. i've also found recently although i've always been you know i've always been a person of faith that i don't i personally don't think you can be confident without faith i think there are people who are self they've got a lot of strong self-belief mm -hmm. but for me i i do i my faith is really 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 helps me with my confidence because it gives me something else it gives me an anchor yeah mm -hmm. um so it gives me an anchor and then i can move from there so i, I gives it gives me somewhere to park my anxieties and my worries yeah and move on mm -hmm. Got it. okay that's nice we have a mm -hmm. question from um bakari what's your experience with teaching confidence to youth male and females from single-headed households minorities etc that's a good question. It is a good question. Right. In, when I'm teaching um, young people, I will always set, uh, try and uh, agree a set of ground rules on the outset. So in those ground rules, it will be, you shall have things like respect each other. But it, I, also, I always say to them, everybody is expected to say something. Everybody is going to, going to com contribute something. And, you know, because they know that everybody's going to talk, you'll find people will open up mm -hmm. because they're not, because you've treated everybody equally. And you've set that expectation that everybody is going to talk e equally. And there was one, there was a time where I had to go into, um, I was teaching um, these people who had, for some reason, they'd missed schooling. So they didn't get their GCSEs. Mm -hmm. And there was one, there was a boy there, and I think he was from a, a single parent household. He's had a lot of change in his life. And do you know that not only did he respond very well to me saying that he needs to... Um, he needs to uh, talk mm -hmm. and give them that space to talk about themselves. Then I had to go for lunch. So he showed me the shop where I needed to go for lunch. And we talked about what, what his interests were. I'm, in the, I'm interested in everything. So anything new, I'm interested in. So he was telling me about his motorbiking and what he did. Mm -hmm. And the um, person who hired me said she was just amazed. She said, I've never seen him like that. Okay. That's a real breakthrough. So I think when you give people time to open up and give them that opportunity to talk, talk about themselves and give them some attention. And it's not, and it's actually not actually focused attention. It's just allowing them to talk and allowing them to be making them, it, it does make them feel important. It makes their, their voice feel like it needs to be heard. Correct. And you can, you can move on. Yes, correct. Because it's like you said, confidence is very important. And um, we may have it to make sure to give them all the skills and tools that they needed. So based on that question, how do you think that um, parents and our family can um, assist them or empower them? 
I think number one to um, um, realize that confidence needs to be to every child needs and is still in a confidence. We're not talking about still. Um, we're not talking about like the arrogance, not building up arrogance, saying my princess can do this, my prince can do this. No, it's about um, spending time with no agenda with your child sometimes and to just to listen to them, to spend time with them. Mm-hmm. Also, um, just to, to realise that they need your time. And one thing I think is very important is be careful about your words with young people, you know? And, you know, that doesn't mean that you're not going to slip up and say bad things. Mm-hmm. And, 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 and actually... <clears throat> We often um, repeat what our parents say to us. But it's about when you do say something out of hand, not being too big to say sorry, you know? Yes. That is really, really powerful as an adult too. Correct. Not something you must do all the time, but you know, you know you've upset your child mm-hmm. um, or you've really hurt their feelings. Because what I noticed that when I was when I started to want to do my own business, my dad sometimes used to say to me, I don't know how you're going to manage (laughs) because I'm very different to my parents. My parents are very conservative. They're very church, you know, they go to church. Mm -hmm. And I'm not like that. You know, I'm more, I'm, you know, you see, I've got my locks. I'm, you know, I'm quite more easygoing. I'm very friendly. I'm very open. And I think they had to be guarded because of where, you know, where they're coming from but for me because they that my parents give me so much love you know I'm very I'm a very loving person I'm a very friendly person mm-hmm. I do I've learned over the years that I yes I need to draw in my boundaries but I'm very loving so sometimes I used to think oh god I don't know how this girl is gonna you know come but you know when I then used to want to do something new I'd hear that voice I don't know how she's going to do it. And then I'd forget what I wanted to do. Mm-hmm. So it's really important Our can, to plant good seeds, mm-hmm. you know, with your words. Correct. Correct. Mm-hmm. That is so true. Because mm-hmm. for everybody, indeed, it is important. No matter how um, you want to build it up, it is important. So now um, we have been talking about the youth. But how do you think that um, adults can build up their confidence? Because you have some that doesn't feel so confident and then they still would like to build it up. So can you give an advice or a tip? Well, I think adults need to be, be aware of themselves. I think too often we don't congratulate ourselves for our wins. So we don't sit down and say, I am good at this 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 and this it's very important for you to regularly to go um to uh, to write down or do an exercise about what skills you've got and what what you bring to the table Mm -hmm. um i think that it's really important to um to look over your past and to, to look at the wins look at what you've done with your life Right. you know so I, I i know that over the past 30 you know 30 years i can track from i've been about 14 mm-hmm. what i've done and what the what the um what my achievements have been and we need to something we, we don't as, as i think as adults we don't um pat ourselves on the back enough so okay. we're often um walking around saying to ourselves i'm now good at this I'm not, I don't do this and limit ourselves. And um, yeah, we, 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 we limit ourselves and then we start to, you know, it's, it's not that we don't actually achieve things, mm-hmm. but um, we, there's too much fear and anxiety attached to doing new things. Mm-hmm. And what, I, what I've learned, and I think, what we are all learning is that you know when people used to say oh i'm too old now 
you know, maybe your granny used to say, me too old now, me can't, me can't do this again. That's rubbish. You can be learning all the time. You can, every day that you draw breath, you can be learning something new. You can be doing something. And like, I would have never told you that this time, 18 months ago, I'd be teaching computing, marketing, um, um, what is it? Networking, cable, computer cable. You couldn't have told me I'd be doing that. Yeah. Probably. But you, you, you are, you are capable and you're able. You know, um, one of the things that I learned when I was when I was um, trying to figure out whether I was going to continue to teach, I learned about the brain and how the brain is. Um, if you put garbage in. You'll get garbage out. If you keep saying that you're not good at something, then you prevent yourself from doing something. Exactly. You know. That um, is, yeah, that is very well said because it's mm. it's correct. Put garbage in, you get garbage out. So you always have to put good um, things in, and also grown ups to the young people, but also between young people, um, we always have to be um, positive, building each other up. So. Um, yeah. That said, um, tonight was about the topic confidence. It was mm -hmm. short, sweet. So if you guys <laughs> want to hear more about um, confidence or you guys want to have Miss Melanie Egal back again, let us know and we'll invite her back again. So oh, thank okay. you very much, uh, Miss Melanie. Thank mm -hmm. you for your time. And then um, we will see each other the next time again with the, with okay. the next topic. Okay, thank you. You want to say something before we close up? Well, so is the time finished? That's gone quick. Yes, <laughs> it goes fast, right? When you talk, when you're enjoying it, it goes yes. fast. Yes. <laughs> unfortunately, I couldn't see all the questions that were or, or what people were saying. So I'm hoping I'm going to have some time to um have a look at the comments afterwards mm -hmm. yes. but I just want to thank you all for your, your, your time I am so excited to um, I can't see everyone, I can only see a couple of people, I can see Frank, I can see Bakari and I saw Myrna a bit earlier if, I tell you what, I, you know I'm Caribbean, mm -hmm. uh, although I was born, I'm born in um, England, I'm, you know, I'm the first one in my family and it's, you know, I've been dreaming about the Caribbean for a while now. And it's just, it's so, it's so nice to have met Ramonda, such a beautiful person. And to, to have this time to spare, share with you. So I'm hoping that, you know, I'll be over there. As soon as this pandemic is over, I'll be over. Yes, you're more than welcome. <laughs> <laughs> then we can do this live instead of over this <laughs> Oh, it would be amazing. Exactly. Be amazing. <laughs> okay, thank you. And okay, enjoy you. the rest of the day, the evening, or the morning. And we will see to... you guys next time. Yes? All right. See you next time. Bye-bye. See you next time. Bye. 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 <laughs>